The press called it one of the most important events of World War II. It was March of 1945, and the war was coming to an end. Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery had been planning Operation Plunder for months. The objective was to cross the River Rhine, which would open the floodgates to invade central Germany. By then, no one expected any German bridges to still be standing, but when American troops arrived at the resort town of Remagen on March 7th, they were shocked to find just that. The Ludendorff Bridge was still there, overrun with Germans fleeing to the village of Erpel on the eastern bank. So surprising was the sighting that the Americans were sure the bridge would explode at any moment. Still, Brigadier General William H. Hogue disobeyed commands and ordered to move into town to capture the bridge. A weak German defense, explosives that didn't work, and the sheer bravery of American soldiers running towards enemy fire resulted in the taking of the bridge, which would trigger a battle between the two forces for the next ten days. Hitler was furious and commanded the bridge to be destroyed at once, but the Americans had lined up unprecedented artillery to protect it. In a final desperate attempt, 11 V-2 ballistic missiles were launched, the first time they were used against a strategic target. Crossing the Rhine After Operation Market Garden failed to secure a bridgehead over the Rhine in September of 1944 by attempting to take control of nine bridges with airborne forces, General Montgomery started to plan Operation Plunder. The massive campaign was set to launch on March 23, 1945, and would involve more than a million troops to invade central Germany. Crossing the river had been a fixation of General Eisenhower, who had issued orders that if a bridge was found intact, they were to, quote, exploit its use to the fullest and establish a bridgehead on the other side. By March 1, 1945, only three bridges were left standing other than the Ludendorff. The Hohenzollern Bridge in Cologne, the Rhine Bridge at Bonn, and the Crown Prince Wilhelm Bridge at Urmitz. They were all destroyed in the following days. The Ludendorff Bridge was built by Russian prisoners of war during World War I. It was 1,300 feet long and connected the towns of Remagen and Erpel. Built for military use, the bridge had two robust stone towers on each bank and several structural points to put explosives. The Allied forces had been trying to destroy the bridge for months in order to weaken the German efforts to regroup in the west. It was bombed and damaged several times, but the Germans kept repairing it. When Task Force Engelmann, part of Combat Command B led by Lieutenant Colonel Leonard Engelmann, reached Remagen by March 7th, they had such little hope that they would find a bridge intact that they had brought their own bridging equipment. The Americans were not even supposed to cross the river at that point, but their mission was instead to take the village of 5,000 inhabitants on their way south to join General George S. Patton's 3rd Army. General William Morris Hogue, commanding officer of the Combat Command B, 9th Armored Division, did not know if the bridge was a trap or how much German resistance they would encounter on the other side. Hogue was asked to withdraw, but he opted to take the bridge at the risk of being court-martialed. It was too great an opportunity to pass up. Taking the bridge. When the Americans got to Remagen, German Captain Will Brutka, the commander in charge of the bridge, only had 36 convalescing soldiers protecting it. Along with them were some engineers, a small anti-aircraft unit, a group of Hitler youth, some volunteers, and about 500 civilians, totaling roughly a thousand poorly trained troops. Allied soldiers from Company A, led by 22-year-old Lieutenant Carl H. Timmerman, crossed the city with very little resistance. When they finally got to the bridge, they were joined by 17 tanks. At around 3 p.m., the commandos learned through a German-captured soldier that the bridge would be destroyed at 4 p.m. Guns opened all around, tanks pulled up, and smoke shells plastered the east side. Back on the German side, an explosion detonated. Captain Karl Friesenhahn was the technical commander responsible for the explosives. The charge only damaged the west span, but prevented vehicles from going through. Captain Bratke gave another order to blow up the bridge, but Friesenhahn refused. The order needed to come from their superior, Major Hans Scheller, who was 1,000 feet away on the opposite side of the railroad tunnel that ran through Erpeller Lay, a steep hill overlooking the Rhine. Bratke ran to get to Scheller, and the command was issued. Friesenhahn turned the key that would set off the explosives. Nothing happened. He tried again, to no avail. Corporal Anton Faust volunteered to leave the tunnel and manually light the cord. Another explosion ensued, but as the smoke cleared, the bridge was still standing and only the southeast pier had been damaged. During the confusion, and under heavy machine gun fire from German snipers on Erpel, the eastern towers, and a partially submerged boat, the Americans took control of the bridge. Sergeant Alexander A. Drabek, a butcher from Ohio, was the first American to cross the Rhine, the first invader to reach the east bank as far back as Napoleon's times. Fifteen minutes later, his entire squad had crossed the bridge while running and screaming. No one was injured. The bridge and immediate land was secured by around 120 soldiers. 
If the German troops had organized and counterattacked, the defense would have been minimal. News of the triumph quickly reached America, where it made front-page headlines and was deemed one of the biggest successes of the ongoing war. The Aftermath While the attack was underway, General Eisenhower gave official orders to take the bridge and secure a bridgehead. Within 72 hours, the operation had switched from a two-battalion maneuver into a four-division offensive. Several units were sent to repair the bridge and build a pontoon bridge and a heavy-duty treadway, the first Allied bridge across the Rhine. The construction was done while under fire, but when a German observer was captured in Remagen, it decreased. By midnight on the day of the attack, tanks were able to cross the Ludendorff Bridge, with 1st Lieutenant Jack Hyde of the 9th Division organizing the flow of people and materials. A destroyer got stuck at some point, halting the crossing of vehicles for several hours. In just one day, over 8,000 soldiers had crossed the bridge and secured a bridgehead of around two miles wide. Ferries were also brought to cross the Rhine, which was faster than through the bridge. Resistance quickly grew, and by the time the 394th Infantry Regiment arrived to relieve the 9th Infantry Division, crossing the 200-yard ramp to the bridge meant going through heavy shell artillery and piles of men. The stretch became known as Dead Man's Corner. The U.S. Army was also equipped with impressive artillery. Colonel Charles G. Patterson, in charge of the anti-aircraft artillery for the 3rd Corps, described their weaponry as, quote, the million-dollar show, because it cost the American taxpayers a million dollars in anti-aircraft ammunition every time a German aircraft dared attack the bridge. German Counterattack General Major Fritz Beierlein was put in charge of organizing the German counterattack. He was given command of around 5,000 men from different Panzer divisions, but some were stationed as far as Dusseldorf. However, a lack of fuel and difficult traveling circumstances gave the Americans more time to advance. Hitler was still determined to destroy the bridge, and during the following 10 days, the German High Command used extensive use of any weapons at their disposal, including 40 Arado AR-234 B-2 turbojet bombers, flanked by 30 Messerschmitt Me 262A2 jet fighter bombers, the first time they were used for a technical target. A variety of propeller-driven aircraft was also used, as well as bomber wings, fighter bombers, an underwater naval demolition squad, and dive bombers. The U.S. defense was so strong that it prevented the Germans from doing any significant damage. The Americans estimated that they shot down around 109 planes out of 367 sent to attack them and captured 11,200 Germans. By March 14th, Hitler gave the order to use V-2 ballistic missiles to attack the bridge. His staff was stunned to hear that the Führer wanted to use such a highly inaccurate weapon on German soil and risk civilians' lives. German soldiers on site were ordered to pull back by about nine miles, which caught the attention of Allied commanders. The threat of V-bombs was imminent, and the possibility of V-2s was alarming. The only way to warn them was a sudden rush of air and a huge supersonic impact. There were fuel supply issues as well, but the Germans were able to put together 11 rockets. On March 17th, SS Battery Department 500 started firing them from Hellendorn in the Netherlands. All the missiles hit near Romagen except for one, damaging several towns. The nearest V-bomb missed the bridge by about 890 feet. It was the first and only time that V-2 missiles were used against a tactical target, and the only time they were launched against a German target during the war. Collapse The Ludendorff Bridge collapsed just after 3 p.m. on March 17th. Around 200 engineers were working on it to strengthen its structure. It was sudden and with no warning other than a screeching noise. About 30 people lost their lives, mainly due to drowning in the freezing waters, and many more were injured. There are many theories about the reasons the bridge collapsed, which coincided with the day of the V-2 bombings. Still, most experts agree that it was mostly due to overuse. The rail bridge had not been built to support heavy vehicles, and it was already weakened due to American bombings two months earlier. Allied troops had already established a bridgehead of almost 25 miles long before it collapsed, extending from Bonn to Koblenz and around nine miles deep. By the end of March, several more tactical bridges were built around the zone, including a Bailey Bridge at the site. In the north, General Montgomery's Operation Plunder faced reduced and debilitated troops, and by March 31st, all four American armies had crossed the Rhine River. Hitler punished many of the commanders responsible for the failure to protect the bridge, while American commanders and troops were recognized for their actions. The bridge was never rebuilt, and a museum now stands in one of its towers. <laughs>